name's Jim Walker. I'm one of the directors here at Walk 21. Uh, we are a global charity that is working to improve walkability around the world and support countries and uh, cities and projects uh, with investment in walkability uh, and walking policy, particularly from this point of view. Uh, we're grateful for, to the Volvo Research and Education Foundation. David's on the call here, actually representing them to, to an extent, who've given us some funding to really look into where we are with national policies, particularly in the pan-European region. And one of the things that we are looking at, as well as looking at the, the policies themselves and establishing to, to an extent whether or not they're being effective, is that we wanted to get actually to meet some of the people who've been writing these documents, the people who uh, could share with us an extent of what the processes are, uh, how these have worked or maybe been effective or some of the barriers that they found along the way. So this may be in a slightly different uh, format than you might be used to in a, in a Zoom meeting. This isn't a PowerPoint presentation where people are saying, this is all the things we've done and aren't we great? Uh, they are great. You know, let's assume that everyone we're interviewing are, are good. Uh, the question is, how do they do it? And what we really want to do is, um, is learn from their experience, particularly to try and inspire other countries. And we know there are many at the moment who are saying, we'd like to develop a policy like that. We'd want one of those, but how do we get started? Uh, what would you recommend? And so this is a, a conversation. It will last uh, until the hour because we've got a second one with Slovenia uh, in uh, in 55 minutes. So it'll be a maximum of that. Um, it's a conversation between myself and with Alessandra uh, representing uh, the, the government of Austria here uh, and with Robert Thaler when he joins us as well um, also as the head of department. Um, as we go, if anybody, we, we did the first two, I should say we've done two already, one with Scotland, uh, with Rona Gibb, and the second one was with uh, Philip Van Aas, who's actually on the call here from the Netherlands. Uh, we really had such a lovely conversation. I do invite you to go and look at those. They're on our YouTube channel now. They've ended up being very popular, um, very insightful, and people were very generous with uh, sharing their experiences about how things worked. Uh, and maybe some of the, the lessons that they've had to share. We'll be writing some of this up as well. Um, all together, we're going to be talking to about seven or eight, maybe up to a dozen uh, countries. Uh, and uh, we hope that this collective experience will really help other people. Okay, so Alessandra, it's, it's you and I for now until uh, Robert joins us. And, and I should say to people, if you want to ask questions, I think Bronwyn's put it in the chat as well. If you want to ask questions, can you just put them in the chat and we'll we'll, we'll try and pick those up at the end. Um, I'll try not to hog all the questions as we go through, but if you've got things you want to say, we'll, um, we'll add them in the end. And I think, as I say, we are recording this so that we can make this available later for people. So Alessandro, I'm afraid you are absolutely on the spot now. Um, Alessandro Angelini, can you maybe just introduce yourself, please, and explain uh, how you fit into this process of what is actually right now, as I understand it, a master plan for walking for the whole of Austria, the second edition. So uh, please, can you tell us how do you fit into that? Do you, do you write these things or is it down to you to deliver it? Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Jim, for the short introduction. Alessandro Angelini, my name. I'm working for the Environmental Agency in Austria, supporting the Federal Ministry of Climate Action, uh, led by Robert Tala, the uh, team uh, Active Mobility and Mobility Management. And within um, the min Federal Ministry, uh, the process was started uh, nearly 10 years ago for the elaboration of the first master plan walking in the year 2015. It was launched uh, at the Walk Space uh, at the Walk 21 conference in Vienna uh, in 2015, and from that on, uh, activities and implementation implementation uh, initiatives took place. Uh, we uh, uh, created a supportive uh, financial funding program for the uh, funding of infrastructure uh, on walking uh, to. Um, Fasten uh, and and enforce uh, walking infrastructure on the local place, 
And uh, were, you, were you there yes. at the beginning? Were you there at 2015? Were, were you at no, that moment? Unfortunately, not. I joined a little later within the development of the second master plan uh, with the Time Horizon 2030, uh, which started nearly two to three years ago with the evaluation of the master plan walking in 2015, uh, um, from 2015. So five years. Yeah after uh, the first launch. And then uh, we um, started to um, yeah, elaborate a new version with concrete uh, with a concrete aim uh, to, um, uh, we have the model split uh, walking like on the national level uh, nowadays, like nearly on 17% and we want to yeah, um, yeah. aim like 20% on the national level until 2030. So the first uh, really aim on, on a quantitative basis. I, um, I, I know you've got a good document and yet yeah. you're in a second edition. What do you do? I'm already trying to identify your role. What, what it, what's your part in this process? Everything, everything. <laughs> no. So um, uh, with, with who actually writes these things? Yeah, well, sorry. it's like a cooperation from the federal ministry uh, with our support. Um, so um, it's a cooperation. Yeah. And we also started like this elaboration of the second document within the national working group on walking and um, yeah. with all uh, yeah, the, the regions and cities and municipalities. Uh, they also gave us a great support and a lot of, of best practices. And uh, there was a nearly like three to four workshops uh, and meetings where we discussed like the measures and the fields of action and how do we cope like with uh, walking and cycling like both on active mobility to strengthen both transport modes so uh, a lot of yeah coordination uh, a lot of coordination yeah. so you're the yeah. coordinator basically you coordinate and you link across the different regions of government the different departments of government and you make sure that the whole thing is on track and working. Yeah. Who, yeah. who actually writes these documents then? Just give us a sense of um, how do these things get put together? The first one, I think it was, there's 40 names in the in the inside cover, the, the 2015 one of people that have been thanked. Did 40 people write it or did it did consultant do it or was it done internally? Um, I'm not sure in 2015. I know that uh, the second version, my name is written on it, but uh, I wasn't the only one who wrote it. It was with the federal ministry, Robert Tala, uh, Eva Mastny. Um, so there were a couple of people in this document yeah. uh, and also with our support and with the um, national uh, working group, this document was elaborated. Yeah, so okay. there's a lot of input. It was not it was not only one ride, it was not all the consulted, but it's a federal ministry document. So, um, and, and how does that work? Is it a Google Doc and everyone just puts their their words in, or you know, does someone draft it and it goes between departments? Well, it's uh, for sure. There's a lot of coordination also within the department of the federal ministry. Um, this is uh, maybe something that Robert Kala, he is really into okay. it, can explain later on. But there is also this process of yeah harmonization of the different strategies because we also have like uh, on the national level the mobility master plan 2030 uh, from the government. Uh, uh, so um, uh, we uh, created also this master plan of walking uh, within this different uh, strategy. I'll, I'll uh, maybe save some of these questions then for Robert when he comes about the original plan, because uh, as I understand it, we, we we got that together at 2015. And um, I know there's other people on the call who knows about this and were there at that moment, actually, in 2015. Walk 21 was coming to Vienna. And as I understand it, the city was you know doing a lot for walking at the time. And uh, and I think the national government decided that you know they they should take this opportunity to use the platform that was being created to actually pull a document together, and it was it actually connected two different departments. It was the transport department at the time and the tourism department, as I understand it. Uh, they had to work together, and that meant that we had two ministers on stage, which is always uh, a challenge <laughs> connecting diaries, let alone trying to work out who should speak first. Uh, but we had two different ministries. Uh, and I think it was relatively unique at the time of, as being a document that worked across uh, departments. It was something that 
uh, bringing people together and, and writing it in, in, a, in a language that actually connected cultures it is something um, that was no doubt a bit of a challenge. I'll, I'll ask Robert about a bit more about that um, when he comes on in a minute. But, but what I saw in the original aims, and maybe you're familiar with this, is that it, did, it wasn't too ambitious. What it really wanted to do, and it had three objectives, it wanted to raise awareness that walking was important. The second thing was to motivate people to pay attention to it. And the third objective was to highlight the opportunity that more could be done. And, and I thought that that um, as a sort of pre-strategy, as it were, it sort of warmed up everybody to thinking that walking was important and, and highlighted the fact that, I mean, it was 60 pages and uh, it, it did contain, uh, I think, 26 actions. It, it wasn't irrelevant in any way, but in warming people up, it brought everyone together, created the agenda, I guess, in many ways. I mean, it was there for a few years, as you say, five, six, seven years before it then became something that um, needed a refresh. You were around for that refresh. We'll, we'll go back to Robert when he joins us in a minute and we can talk about that, that original part. Oh, he's, he's here now. But uh, I'm wondering about that refresh. At, at what point did you feel um, it, it, the case has been made, that we understand the awareness has been raised, that people are engaged and we need to develop a second edition. At what point did you get involved in that? And Robert, I'm coming to you in a second to come back to those original questions. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Alessandra, what's your sense of, of that second edition? What, why we got to that point? Well, uh, we um, elaborated, after the elaboration of the first master plan of walking, there was like an evaluation. And I think this was also a crucial point to see which field of action also took place and on which, yeah, um, yeah, where where have we been and where shall we go? And there was also a necessity to uh, rearrange like the fields of action also with the thematic fields. Uh, we have to think also about like data quality, but also dig digitalization. And uh, we also have to create uh, the further strategic view for the financial supportive program. So there was a specific need for a new time horizon, also with specific right. aims. And that wasn't like the case in the first edition. Yeah, you got much more specific didn't you actually and you, yeah. you were talking about finances and in fact you've got a whole new department you've got a whole new ministry in many ways haven't you uh, Robert thank you for joining us I'm going to uh, come backwards a, a little bit and just uh, to talk about that 2015 moment there we were on stage two different ministers uh, we're merging cultures of two different uh, departments you know it was quite unusual at the time to bring these things together no one actually quite knew whether they would go on stage together, whether it was all going to be OK, who should speak first. Um, these things are quite tricky, weren't they? And, and you've spent a career trying to work in a multidisciplinary teams to sort of get people to, to come onto the same, same agenda. How hard was it to write that first document, to bring those ministries together and to do it in time for a moment, you know, where we had the conference in Vienna and, you know, the deadline was set. You know, how long did it take and, and how hard was it? Wow. Uh, I'm not a. I'm. I'm. Have to refresh all the memories of all these uh, years ago. I mean, um, the main thing was that we, um, as you know, Austria is a federal country with federal states. It has a special institutional division of competencies, and normally, walking, cycling, and all this stuff is on the agenda of the local re and regional. Uh, competence level. So the federal level normally has nothing to do. Uh, that's the, that would be the theory also from the finances. The We started with the master plan on cycling because we see, and that's valid also for walking even more, we see that we have a patchwork in Austria. We have some cities, some regions which have done very quite well initi initiatives to promote walking for example a lot of pedestrian zones whatever but mm. it was not the mainstream and as a federal ministry and also vis-a-vis -vis all the uh, commitments we have to fulfill uh in the eu for uh, all our programs um, every year they will be monitored and we have to uh, and we have to take all kind of measures together to achieve that so that was that puts pressure that uh, on our agenda, saying, okay, we want to have more potential. We, we know that there's a big potential because there is 
all the statistics uh, is saying even the wrong statistics because of model split underestimating walking but even those statistics are saying that there is a high percentage of short trips in in our urban areas in Austria mm -hmm. nearly 50 percent of 45 below uh, under five kilometers and a quarter under two kilometers so there is a potential and on the other hand we see that urban sprawl is uh, putting pushing away this potential because the drips are getting longer 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 so there this was a some kind of a, of a clash and then we say okay the federal level has to uh, undertake action to make this patchwork disappear and make it a mainstream that active mobility is promoted all over Austria and not just in parts or cities and region. And the master plan on cycling was a quite a, a, a good motivator because that was a success story. We the first master plan cycling was 2006, so 10 years before. Yeah, was was, said, was that was that cycling one? Did that come because they? I think Vienna was hosting Velo City, wasn't they, at some point? And then they did a master plan for cycling. No, no, it's and, 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 the Vienna City was later, so we had already the. Oh, master. okay. So but, you had a master plan first, okay? Yes, 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 yes. So the pan-European master plan for cycling was uh, the nucleus was the Velo City in Vienna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, a choke. <laughs> but I always think uh, chokes are a very important element that then they will happen in reality. Um, but as you said, the Walk 21 was then for us a very good, um, let's say, a momentum, because Vienna asked us that, uh, if we are interested to join and co-host the whole what we are, of course, what we are what we uh, did. And uh, this was also a very good argument uh, in our ministry to say, okay, we, we will have a big conference, a global conference on walking in Vienna. And I think Austria should show up with a positive contribution. So this- I think, I think you might've done it quite quickly. Yeah, I think you did it in about six months. Yeah, is, yeah. That, is that right? Yes, this, yeah. this, this helps a lot uh, and we followed the example of the master plan on cycling so we tried to put together the responsible people in the federal states uh, okay. I, I convinced my colleagues in the ministry of transport at that time that that's not a, not a bad idea to work together in that respect and that was the nucleus and we succeed in a quite a short time um, we made the experience first to have a big, big bulk of papers, and then we condensed it to a political focus with uh, recommendations for all kinds of competence levels. And it was yeah. presented, and this, I think, was very important, that the minister himself at that time uh, attended the conference and presented this document together with Absolutely. Uh, the vice mayor of Vienna. So that was a very good momentum for us, helped a lot. Um, to, yeah, so, we, so we, you had a platform. I, I mean, I noticed in the back of the document, in the 2015 document, there's four pages of references. You, you know, so as you say, I can see the, the sort of working that you, you must have looked at lots of different papers, as you say, yeah. brought them together, defined an agenda, given it some structure, and borrowed that structure from the cycling uh, framework, I guess. It, it, it does, that sounds like what you've done. Yeah. I, I mean, that's absolutely fine. Like I say, there's nothing wrong with these things. It's just understanding how it worked. And of course, we also looked what what other European countries have done, and we were totally disappointed that we didn't find any, uh, only Scotland and Norway at that time, which have such national strategies on a national level. Yes. So that was a we thought there's a real gap. So even more, it was a it was an impetus for us to be a forerunner in Europe, making a national strategy and walking in Austria. So that was an additional element of momentum because that could be also. And important was an all important story also for the minister to to tell that pe the people that we are forerunners in Europe and not late comers. Absolutely. So you like to be you like to be first, and and I get that. That's always a motivation. I understand that. We talked to, uh, a little bit just before you arrived at, uh, about the the ambition of it was really to talk about raising awareness about walking, motivating people to pay more attention, and sort of highlighting the opportunity to do more. I mean, they're the three objectives of the first edition. Um, how did people respond? I mean, at the end of a conference, you know, everyone's exhausted and they all have to go back and get back to their normal jobs. Did you find that it had created a momentum or, or was there, did it fall flat for a little bit? And, and who, who picked that up? Uh, uh, yes and no. Of course, the, the, the conference is always a hype. You know, you have a, a hype, this, the press is interested, everybody's interested. 
and then uh, you enter end up in a steppe, you know, with a high, <laughs> with a long way yeah. to go, with a lot of wind attacking you and counteracting you, and people lose interest and so on. Of course, this also was a little bit endangering the whole process. I mean, uh, what we did is that our ministry um, put some money. So it's always money is uh, very important because it's the it's the it's it's a materialization of political will. So there was a will to do further action and to implement the actions done. So that means the first did the first was we did what I did. In fact, in my budget, I reserved an, a, a money for our federal environment agency. And since that time, the federal environment agency oh, okay. has, done, has, so, got, so right. has got the job to to put to to keep the thing alive and to try okay. to promote the implementation. And it was it was as I said, as we are federal countries, what not easy because the major competencies are not on the federal level. What we did on the federal level is we okay we will we will deliver something like a coordination platform that's for all the stuff very important also for the for the regional for the federal states that that's financed by the federal ministry by the government and for that we contracted the environment agency and we try then and we start negotiations to establish something similar like we did in the in the um, in the cycling area so an, an a coordinator so persons uh re human resources uh okay so and, so and you are actually also, allocated also, someone and also money yeah? so okay no, so let's just let's just talk about that, that for a second a long, that took a long time um, yeah yeah uh, but at the end i would say it was an up and down of course but at the end it yeah. survived and um I must say that the year 2019 or 20 is a very important year because then we got the new government in okay. Austria. And in this government, for the first time, we had, a, I think, two or three pages. So a special chapter on promotion of active mobility and a lot of positive momentum and political commitment was laid down in this government treaty. And this was for us important to negotiate with the finance ministry financial support to to negotiate internally for additional stuff um so you always depend on the government uh, yes yes and this of course we try to influence the negotiations of the governments we say okay this would be important this would be important this is important so we let, also let, say active mobility is important yeah so let's just talk about resources then let's talk about resources basically did you have a person right from the beginning did you actually allocate did you appoint a, an alessandro if it wasn't her did you have someone there just for walking or yes. and, how, and when you say money how much money kept it alive well how much do you think was in your budget at that time when you got started uh, it was not it was not the big amount uh, i mean um, but there was a contract with the environment agency. So I, I got no personal additional stuff in the ministry, but I got the money. I had the money for contracting the environment agency to do the job on behalf of the ministry. So that uh, means, like a hundred, hundred thousand, is it or less than a hundred thousand? I don't quote figures if I don't know them by heart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, less. I, I'm just trying to work out the scale, you know, would it be like less than a hundred thousand or would it be yeah. somewhere between that and a half a million or? No comment on that, but it's okay, not okay, millions, okay. you know. <laughs> not millions. Not That's millions. a good start. No, 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 no. no. Um, okay. It was important that you have a, a human power, you know, a human resource there. And there was a guy at that time, uh, so uh, in, in the environment agency, who did a, quite a good job. And in my yeah. division, we tried to, I tried to restructure a little bit and and put the walking agenda as as uh, an addition to some uh, to a, to a, to a collaborator of mine so there was somebody who it was it was not his main task but it was so to say he take care of this work of the environment agency and then we had yeah. several meetings uh, uh two or two meetings a year so um at that time we were different ministries environment and transport and i have to say the environment ministry was the driving force because they gave we gave the money and uh, the transport ministry they produced a handbook so they also contributed uh yes. some kind of a, a planning handbook a statistical handbook on walking so so, so it's not just about people. it's not just about money it's actually about making a contribution some resources that were going to help move the yeah. agenda forward. Well, human resources are, is also money 
because you have to yeah, pay yeah, the contracts yeah. or do you and, pay the employees? And you set and you, and you set up a working group, I think, quite early on as well, didn't you? That seems to have people there from the federal level, from the regions, you know, from the municipalities. How many yeah. people are on that working group? And how did you make that work? Or how did you even find yeah. those people? No, I mean, this as we are a federal state, we cannot do, we have to do always to coordinate with the people on, in the in the nine federal states. So we have to encourage these federal states to, to nominate somebody to this working group. Um, and we also encourage the major cities of Austria, so the capital cities of the federal states, also to uh, nominate people. And we had a very good relationship to our National Association for Cities and National Association for Communities. So they also were invited to take part. And we have also an NGO, Walkspace, you may know him, Dieter Schwab, who was also part he's, of the, of He's on the team. call here as well. Yeah. He's on the call. So he's listening in. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so there was a mixture of uh, government representation of the federal level and all kind of local, regional and local governments plus experts and and NGOs. So that was the core. It was some meetings have been attended uh, in a higher attendance rate, some less. So that was a little bit of an up and down at that time. So that's about twenty people or something like that. Yeah, something it's like about twenty. Yeah. Till till the new government then start at two thousand twenty. This was then a new. Yeah. A new amp, and then at that time it was also the attendance increased, and because their importance increased, because the federal level says this is a priority for the federal level, and this is very important. Also, then to follow up, to be followed up by the regional governments. Yeah. In, in the first edition, um, you have uh, you highlight a couple of um, positive actions. Uh, one of them you mentioned deep to there and workspace. Uh, you, uh, one of those that you highlighted was the Walkspace Awards, you know, where people have been rewarded for doing a good job for things already in walking uh, around Austria. Um, the two others that I think got particularly promoted were uh, Home Zones, work that was being done to sort of um, give more priority to pedestrians in, in uh, residential neighbourhoods, yeah. and, uh, and schools, you know, yeah. the work that you've done on schools. Yeah. These are still strong themes, I think, and good collaborations that continue across Austria. Um, how important was it to actually demonstrate that there are actions, you know, that there are things already, that there's a momentum, that people are joining, you know? Um, was that, you, you must have made that decision early on in, in pulling together the different players, I guess, to sort of highlight what the, what the, uh, what the, what the story was and, and what people were joining if they wanted to be part of this strategy. Yeah, of course, the, the practical things, the visible things, the tangible things are always the most important ones. I mean, uh, so for that, we always put we always put good practice examples in these master plans as part of the master plan. Also, we try to put the the local or regional politicians in the boat so that they are part of the story and not just um, reacting. This was for the second edition. This was, I think, a very successful approach because we have now statements for all nine regional councillors in the plan. And we saw that in the master plan on cycling, that this helps to that they identify themselves with the plan. And in I, the- I really like that, yeah. I really can, like that. You, I know, you know you've you got 21. I am, I am part of the of the of this plan, so with the- Absolutely, picture. so and you've got that sense of ownership, point. haven't you? It's yes. the ownership. Yeah. And, and, and I noticed in the second edition, you actually have, 20 pages, I mean, it's about 100 pages or 90 yeah. pages altogether. 20 pages are, are, are descriptions of successes. Yeah. You know, I really like this. It's yeah. a very interesting idea. I haven't seen it in other strategies before. Yeah. But 20 pages of successes, demonstrations, visible actions, as you say. And within those 21 quotes, you've got pictures of people. Yeah, exactly. You know, the real people who are delivering or the people that you need to demonstrate commitment. A real sense of ownership, a sense of a teamwork. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, that was obviously a deliberate thing. You, you think it was, it's been helpful to really coalesce a sense of community of, around this agenda? No, absolutely. I mean, because our ministry, the federal level, is so to say the, the coordinator of giving the impulse. Um, but the work and the implementation has to be done then on the local level, even and on the regional level. So there is the commitment of the local politicians, regional politicians is very important. And this helps also, this approach has helped also the, the let's say the, the civil servants on the on the regional level 
that this topic walking is given more profile in the in the local or in the regional government. And, and the other thing, what what I think, what is a very what what we did good progress is that we negotiated with the finance ministry as it was a, as it was laid down in the treaty of the government coalition parties that we have we should enlarge our existing uh, financial support program, Klima Active Mobil from cycling also to walking infrastructure. Because yes. this was an absolutely key uh, carrot, so to say, from, from, our, from our perspective. And then we put it together with some requirements to, to get this carrot. And this requirement was for, for us very clear. If we have a, on the federal level have a master plan on walking, then you have to do the same story on the on your local level for applying then for getting the funds for implementing this plan and the measures have to be in the plan so so it's not just Absolutely. 100 meter sidewalk here and the pedestrians there and that's it this was the normal at, at before but we we have heavy heavy criticism about that complicated how to do it what to do on the local level yeah I mean, how to prioritize we made a yeah. handbook uh, a handbook for local master plans on walking to help them and uh, we also say okay for small municipalities we say you don't need a full master plan you need a strategy but for all um, more than fifteen thousand inhabitants you need a master plan on walking and then. It was really nice to see that uh, after one year of, of uh -huh, you know, we, what we have to do now. So there was one year of something people what to do now. Uh, a lot of uh, cities started to elaborate uh, local master plans on walking because they know if I do that, I get money from the federal level. And this is up to 50% co-financing of infrastructure. So if I want to have a nice pedestrian zone, or a shared space zone, or even broader sidewalks, or a network of, of for walking in my city or my municipality, I will get the money 50% from the federal level. Uh, and for that, it's worthwhile to make a plan. And, and uh, even the, even the so-called planning costs for this master plan on walking are covered. If they I can claim those. If they lead to an investment. So we always say we don't right. want to finance paper, we want to finance practical things. And now we have around 10 already supported, and we have even more in the pipeline. And the city of Vienna is a forerunner because the city of Vienna is special. So we have is is the district in the city. So we have 23 districts in Vienna, which is responsible for this planning. And we have already three districts uh, which we are supporting, and now more and more in the pipeline. So I think 10 districts will join yep. this year so there is a run now for the federal money by the local yes, yes. communities Let, let's talk about that money a second because uh you, you said it very quickly but ultimately <laughs> what you did was you got the federal uh, the finance uh department to agree that they were going to fund something now did you come up with the strategy about what you wanted money for and then go to the finance department or did the department say to you this is how much we can give you so you you then write the you write the plan based on what you can afford no the, the nucleus was that we say okay we ha we have the in our uh, re regulation for our which is the, set, the, the legal framework for our funding we had already that uh, the federal level can in, it's a climate uh, funding program. So that means you have to make climate action oriented measures there. And we argued, okay, we have net, we have funding of infrastructure, for example, for cycling, we have already there, but we have not on walking. So we just, we just said, okay, in the government treaty of the coalition, we have a task to extend it to walking. This was the absolute important argument because the finance minister has also signed this agreement of the coalition party. So that was a task also for them. And, and I think I was surprised. It was not, not, a, not a real problem to convince them that we extend the infrastructure funding also to walking. I, I personally was a little bit scared about it because normally you have every five year big negotiations between the federal level and the regions and the federal states of reallocating the, the taxes. This is a so-called the, the balance of income, you know, uh, so that yeah. the federal level is taking is is getting all the money, and then it's it's getting back to the or putting back to the regions. And normally, if things which are in the competence of the regions and the federal states 
they have to be handled there. But normally, for example, the roads, local regional roads are in that case uh, regulated in these negotiations on the reallocation of our taxes. But there was there is nothing on, on active mobility there. So we got the permission to have an, an extra fund uh, for infrastructure, which normally has to be funded by the regional and local level. And this permission and, and, on up to 2031, uh, as, okay. because this is a part of our contribution to climate action. To that, that these are very important. So, so it's a it's a ten year financial commitment. And was it done at political level, or or did you manage to negotiate this between officers? No, that's the the the, the political task comes from the government treaty. Of course, this is the task where we can then say, okay, look here, it, these are the two pages we have to make the. We have to put a uh, work on that and effort on that, and this and, and this is one thing which is very important. So this was negotiated on on the civil servant level, and then okay. of course, of course, the 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 after successful negotiations, uh, the minister signed the the new the new funding regulation, including yeah. Yeah. and and, 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 uh, and can you tell us? This... Yeah, sorry. The other story was then this was the this was the legal basis because this was the precondition. To then negotiate with the finance minister, we need additional money, and this was also a very good coincidence with the new government. We have a green minister. We have she's very committed on cycling and also on active mobility as a whole. And we have now a budget which uh, was, I think, increased seventeen fold. So from four five million now this year we will have sixty seven million. Uh, where we can co-finance also infrastructure for cycling, for walking, for mobility management. So it's not earmarked. So it, the principle is uh, the first come, first served. So okay. um, first come, first served. But what about um, walking and cycling? It, you know, how much of it do, can you? Is there a money that's definitely just for walking, or is it is it put oh, in a pot for active travel? It's a pot for active travel and mobility management. So this is, uh, I think, uh, it's easier for handling uh, because, it, of course, you can say, okay, we have 10 million for walking, but if you have a higher application rate, then we, you have to shift. If you have a lower, <laughs> then you have to shift. So so we have the principle first come, first serve, and we have one point. Okay. I'm going to ask Alessandro to just comment on this. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks for that background. That's really helpful. Alessandro, then, so here we are. There's a budget of 67 million. <laughs> and it's down to the to the authorities to actually ask for some of that money, and it's fifty percent towards actually delivering something on the strategy. Uh, how does that go, and how do you know whether any of that is being spent on walking, or do you have to get them to? Do they need to be encouraged to ask for that money, uh, and are they asking for the right things, or is this where you fit in to sort of help them sort of match up where, where the budget should be spent and and what they want to spend it on? Well, we support the federal ministry with this financial supportive program. We elaborated also uh, like the call for uh, the different projects. And for sure, we're doing a lot uh, of work uh, encouraging like uh, local municipalities uh, to um, 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 well, uh, take the money. <laughs> so we have. Is it hard or is it easy? They want to take the money. They definitely want to take the money, uh, and uh, we have like with the national walking group uh, a lot of meetings on this financial support uh, program where we are discussing like details um, because it's like also kind of uh, um, uh, the precondition uh, of elaborating the local master plan walking. Uh, so there was definitely a need for further information for the municipalities to elaborate this document. So we also created uh, uh, this handbook, uh, like kind of uh, fact sheet uh, with detailed information. Uh, so uh, a lot of information and, and, and coordination for these municipalities but we're not the only one <laughs> yeah no we must Supporting. we must put links in for the handbook i think that sounds really critical yeah. you you've made a bridge haven't you between a national framework and and a delivery process and and uh, it's really good to hear about that just thinking about metrics then um because you know i saw in the document that you you've uh, you've applied the who heat tool and you put a value on um on lives saved from increasing physical activity. Uh, you've also talked about targets of moving towards 20% of mode share 
I think in the 50s it was at 70 percent or something and then every and over the 10 years it, it sort of always gets halved and and so you're really wanting to steady the ship on mode share I guess and then move it back in the in a positive direction I think it's at 17 percent when you wrote the first strategy um so you've got mode share I'm sure there's also um a road safety target in there how how are you evaluating a sense of success? How, how can you is it now becoming about the the spend of the money and and sort of getting the fifty percent allocated, or or are you also being able to measure these sort of outcome metrics? Well, I mean, I think the heat tool first of all is a really really great uh, planning tool. Uh, we uh, want to raise the awareness uh, to really implement this tool within the planning process. We also did it like for the master plan of walking where we calculated um, the uh, annual, uh, um, well, um, Amount yeah, I think of, you were of live saved. Cases, I think, like live saved yeah. 2,500. And That's also right, 2,500 lives uh, saved and yeah, 9.6 like billion euros billion saving on euro the health service. Saving on health service, yeah. Per year. Um, Per year, yeah. Um, and I think this is a crucial factor uh, of planning and it has also to be like uh, indicated because we're also talking, always talking about CO2 emission and the positive uh, climate friendly effects of active mobility, but there should also be like other indicators, which means like health indicators or also city in city indicators with well life being um because urban planning has a lot to do with a high quality life uh, of city and pedestrians and our citizens uh, so i think we have to put more focus on these indicators we've got um i think 50 actions in this new document the 2022 document 50 actions 10 themes um a lot of money being spent here and it's all in your area you've got to coordinate all of this at the moment um uh, just tell us what's that like is it does it feel about right the scale's about right or could you do a lot more could you imagine that this is going to grow or or do you feel as though you're in a, in the right sort of ballpark for this policy well i mean coordinate the money is from the federal ministry so uh we are just helping out and and trying to really bring forward the topic to raise awareness also on the community level to uh, create personal resources to have somebody in charge on the local level to bring this topic forward um and uh to yeah uh, to have also somebody who knows what he's doing. And that's the reason why also we created like this local master plan walking uh, so that we have like this concept within the transportation system um, in a community or in a, 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 in a municipality uh, to really set the focus on what is crucial what should we change where should we put the focus and how can we yeah uh, increase like the infrastructure or yeah mm -hmm. it, you've gone from five million to 67 million it, is that stressful uh, and could you could you go higher it, it makes me happy that the federal ministry has uh, that much money for active mobility uh, for cycling and and walking and i think there are a lot of people in charge who really want to bring forward this topic yeah what what if you doubled it would it we would still be happy i mean and do you think enough is being spent on walking or do you think walking still needs to be fought for i think that city planning has to focus more on people yeah okay thank you yeah good point right let's let's talk we haven't got long left and uh if people got questions they want to ask just put them in the chat we'll, we'll try and get to a couple in, in a minute but i really want to talk about lessons for other people you know we're you've done a good job you were one of the first in the world to develop a policy at a national level uh, you've been doing it for a few years you're on your second edition you've you've given us some really helpful insights but where would you say to countries who are saying that we haven't started yet? Um, you know, is your formula the right one that you, you give yourself a deadline, invite the ministers onto the stage and say, you better have something to say and something to wave in, in a month's time. Is that the right way? Or, you know, what, 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 what would your lessons be for other people? Robert, maybe you could start, please. I mean, the, the lessons learned are very easy. If, if you have, uh, if you need solutions, you have to take all kinds of solutions and walking is and you have to take walking on an equal level as all the other transport modes. If you don't do that, then you are helpless. <laughs> you are helpless. 
So the first thing is to recognize walking is not just a facility for making a hike or making a leisure trip or something else. No, it's a very important transport mode in cities. And in fact, it's a very economically very important transport mode in cities. It's the basis for the local economy. Very important, powerful argument. So this is, I think, in the mindset of stakeholders, the first thing is the recognition that walking is as important as car driving. Not an okay. easy, not an easy bridge. Uh, and and then it depends on your national constitution. If you are a central government, you have you can do it, you can do it very easily because then you command all the others to do that. So also you can learn a lot from our experience as we are a federal state. So we have to convince uh, we cannot make a legislation and saying you have to do now local master plans on walking because it's not our competence, but we have to take the other. This can be done if you are a centralized country. You can say, okay, we make a national law, a legal act on, on this. Very, very, let's say, compared to a federal state, very easy done. In a federal state, you have to divide the division of competencies, the division of budget, and all this kind of stuff. And then you have to find a good way of how to coordinate and how to so bring it's them, all about that cooperation how to, how to bring them to, together to partnerships and for that yeah. Herald, like for example making together a strategy for the first time and then also not just make the paper but also negotiate a financial support to the local governments is crucial because this is then so to say um, it's not just that the federal level is demanding you to do something, but he's helping you also to do something. So, this so it's, a, it's a cooperative process to, to actually bring the document together. Exactly. Uh, and and I, I went, what, one, one element yeah, go on, go on. One thing is, as, I, as uh, you recognize in the new edition, it's important to create ownership on that. Yeah. So that is a common task, and it is not just the ministry of the government, it's also the task of the local mayor, and the and the regional councillor and and that's very important to bring them on board because then I I say then you can produce a synergy in bureaucracy so that all people are pulling on the same direction the rope um, that's I think not an easy task so it's it's uh, you can learn a lot from a federal country which has this kind of an institutional setup so that you have always to cooperate with the different uh, bodies of your regional and local competencies. So it's very, very important. But the combination of having a strategy on ownership on that strategy and then offering support financial from the federal government is very important because we are paying only 50%. So the, the, you have to double the amount of yes. the investments. The other 50% is coming from the communities or from the, from the regions. So in fact, we we give a stimulus also for them to, to give a priority to budgeting on also on the local level and also on the region level for infrastructure investments on walking, which was not the case yeah. before. Yeah. Because that's and, very and, important. And your department, you talk about you talk about uh, synergies in bureaucracy. I like that. That's that's very, very <laughs> interesting, Copy, very astute. Copyright. Copyright. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. But, but you know, <laughs> in this new strategy, it's it's all seems to be about efficiency. It's about um, resource saving, space saving, uh, emission saving, uh, bad health saving. You, you know, it's it, and and I'm wondering whether this sort of COVID. Uh, you're now in a department. I mean, talk about synergies. Your department, I think, is called climate, environment, energy, mobility, innovation, and technology. Um, you know, that that's a that must be quite a letterhead to get all those words in there. But you know, does that mean? Is the climate emergency the new currency that you now need to evaluate this policy about? It is it, and is COVID and the climate uh, policy has that given us an extra push? Is this is this the thing that has really got everyone's attention? Have you been able to use that? Do you think other people could use it? I think, of course, the climate issue was at the first glance the driving force, but. You see, if you calculate the trips, then you have uh, walking and cycling are short trips. So the amount of CO2 emission reductions is not big compared to changing the vehicle fleets or whatever. Uh, but what is a very, very powerful argument for these active modes, and especially for walking, are the health effects. So the positive health effects on your or your individual health. 
Uh, I think this is, and this is a kind of a change in the lifestyle. So people are running for kilometers uh, and then sitting and eating fat hamburgers, which is, makes a ridiculous thing. So to bring more people walking on a daily basis, it's also improving health. And for that, we have a very good cooperation with our health ministry. So, so this is, I think, a very powerful argument. And COVID, this was the only positive side of COVID was that walking and cycling, but especially walking got an even higher uh, recognition in the, in the population because they see these are the basics, these are the basic uh, transport modes if, if, you, if you are in a, in a, let's say, in this bad situation. And this also, I think, increased the, the, the awareness that walking and, and also cycling, but walk, even more walking is the basis for the local shops and for the local economy vis-a-vis -vis all the online uh, trading. So this is also, uh, I mean, the economic, I always say, uh, this is this American uh, slogan, you know, stupid, the economy matters. And I say, yes, the economy matters, but then of course, walking policy matters because this helps your local economy to, 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 um, to blossom. So this was also, Absolutely. and now we have the third argument, energy saving, of course, it's energy, it's also part of energy saving. So there was a, this kind of COVID produced a window of opportunity again, because there was a big, uh, you know, a big pressure for action. And, and especially also to put on, on an effort on active mobility. So this helps a lot. And this, because this combination of the health argument of your personal you can convince people more with your personal argument and personal fitness. Climate change is something uh, you can you feel. Uh, yes, it's hot, but then it's cold again. And, but the personal uh, health argument is very powerful, and especially when you want want to convince people to walk more and to to uh, to cycle yeah. more. And these 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 uh, measurements in the internet where you can say, "Ah, I have already made ten thousand steps a day." It's like yes, yeah. you know you you make it, it's like a hype. Everybody wants to to have these ten thousand steps. This famous uh, because then he, of course, she or he is healthy. Okay. That's uh, communication. Uh, 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 we're getting those messages out, Alessandra. You've got a background in health, I think, and health policy and uh, doing these sorts of things. Do you think health is reflected enough in the document at the moment? Do you do you lean on your background to sort of help with this or, or do you feel it's more transport energy focus uh, do you feel the balance is about right well um, I'm, I'm on urban planner uh, I think health uh, the health factor is really crucial uh, with hit active mobility and I think we also demonstrated a uh, kind um, with we have a chapter on health uh, in it and I think it's a first step towards it and we have also like a working group uh, where we um, yeah try to figure out how we can uh, combine health and active mobility more seamlessly uh, within our policy uh, on a different level. So I think it's just a starting point. Yeah. Uh, yeah but in, within point. the document, within the document, I think that we really did a, a good, good job to, to put health in this transport uh, uh, oriented strategy, but with the oriented strategy, yeah. And just I, to add on, I mean, Robert, you you, also, yeah, you, yeah. you said everything. I think ownership is really, really crucial. And another key factor, less learned, I think it's also that the networking and creating the community within the different um, yeah, um, regions and, 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 and municipalities. To we're, feel... we're hearing that a lot. Yeah, yeah we've heard that theme yeah. in, in all the people we've interviewed so far. Thank you so much. Look, you've been very generous, both of you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, well, I don't think we've got any specific questions that people have, have asked. I'm sure they'll be in touch with you if they want to uh, directly. I do appreciate the time you've given us, Robert, Tala, Alessandra Angelini from uh, the Austrian government. Thank you so much for your sharing your insights today about how to develop a policy and the, the challenges that you, you face along the way. I think you've demonstrated to us a real sense of leadership. Uh, you made it look very possible. And I hope that your experiences will inspire lots of other countries to, to do more. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for being so generous with that. And we'll keep in touch, but thanks for all you're doing in Austria. Thanks, thanks a lot. And we hope to see you all at the PEP conference on where walking is a top issue 
on 25th, 27th of April in Vienna. So look forward to see, to meet you also, Jim, I hope. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.